Hello, Sir Isaac Newton. Now, this little guy over here. Now, Sir Isaac Newton discovered a notable amount of things, such as a white light actually has a bunch of all the other types of light combined into one, discovered the binomial theorem. But what we're going to talk about today is his discovery in physics that constituted gravity. Now, of course, an apple is bigger than Statue Newton over here's head. But an apple, well, fell right next to him, not on his head. Well, there's a very small chance, it's almost uh, certainly apocryphal, that uh, the story of an apple falling on his head was actually what happened. Because all Sir Isaac Newton ever recalled himself was that the idea of gravity was occasion to him on the fall of a friggin' apple. But anyway, apple fell, and Newton thought, hey, what's pulling it? And he came up with the idea called graffiti. No, gravity. Gravity, I bought that. Gravity was the idea that everything was being pulled to the center. Oh, I don't, he I didn't know what type of force it was, like how the force of gravity was actually exerting itself, but well, he just assumed. Hmm. This object, another object, massive enough, attract. But the thing was, the thing was, that Sir Isaac Newton never actually explained uh, how this actually a system works. Now, it was pretty embarrassing in uh, his idea because he never explained it. Uh, you can even see that Newton face is real red here. He was real embarrassed, especially in this picture. He's so angry and like so like embarrassed that they're taking his picture right now. <laughs> Look at him. Anyways, the thing was, Newton never explained it. And I probably said that four times now, but hey, I don't care. So, what Einstein did was he eventually started to build on Newton's explanation. And he instead suggested mm, that gravity was bending of some weird, cool old thing he called space-time. Which was basically a four-dimensional thing that had space and time. Imagine it as this. You know a zero D thing, right? Point. Now, take infinite points together. An infinite point, put them all in a line, and you get one line, which is one dimensional. Now, put infinite lines together in one row, and you get a square, which is two dimensional. So it seems we jump up a dimension by cloning things infinite times and then putting it in a row. So now what happens when we put a uh, flat square and uh, clone it infinite times and then put it in a row? It becomes a cube. And now, to get this, imagine that you have an infinite amount of cubes. Every single cube representing a single moment in time. And then combine them all together in one big fatty boy row. And that's basically the fabric of space-time. And space-time is three-dimensional, so it can bend when an object comes near, well, a certain part of space-time. Einstein built off this idea and actually gave a rational explanation. But the thing was, Newton didn't realize that according to the law of gravity, the universe should either be contracting or expanding. Because, well, otherwise, well, what would gravity do? But there was so strong a belief of a static universe at this time that Sir Isaac Newton thought, Hmm, I don't know. Maybe, just maybe, I can modify my theory to actually be correct. And so, well, his theory was already wrong, but he just had to make it worse. But, but, he made the force of gravity repulsive in large distances. Oh my freaking god, Newton, I thought you were a genius. But you literally just followed the damn norm now. Okay, okay. Chill down. Okay, let's just throw him on the floor. So, um, Newton's gone. But anyways, um, the thing was, Newton thought that he could screw up his uh, thing even more. I mean, I mean, he could imp improve 
quotation mark, quotation mark. His theory, by making gravity repulsive at large distances. So that means that it wouldn't affect his solar system predictions, but it meant we're talking about Sir Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein's blunder. So I already talked about Sir Isaac Newton's dumb little blunder. But what about Albert Einstein? His theory predicted a largely expanding universe, but he had to screw his own theory just like this little dude. Just to favor what was the major belief at the time. Einstein, I thought you were good too, but you had to screw it up. How exactly did he screw his own damn invention up? Well, he used the cosmological constant. Now, what was the cosmological constant? Well, it's basically something that just kept the universe in balance. Uh, he uh, said that maybe this would like repulse and make the universe contract, therefore resulting in a static universe. So, but the thing was, he screwed up his own damn theory too. It was already correct, but he had to screw it up. And everybody thought that his screwed up theory was the correct version. Correct. Until Hubby came along. I mean Hubble came along. <laughs> the universe started off with Hedward, I mean, I mean point, which was invented by him, I mean God. And this point was infinitely dense. It was a singularity, as Michael Lork would call it. And this singularity continually continued to expand and expand until it reached the size it did today. And so, he thought, it must have been expanding continuously. And the, well, when the Hubble telescope was invented to go all the way back into the past using the light of a star that are millions of light years away, uh, sometimes even billions, uh, he looked all, well, I mean the telescope looked all the way back into the past when the universe was a tiny little baby boy. I mean, I mean, the universe was very, very tiny. And so that means that you know, this universe, mm, must have been expanding since it was even born, which Einstein and Newton hadn't even bothered to think about. Instead, they screwed up their damn theories by following the damn flow. Do little. Anyways, um, the god has fallen again. Um, you know, from the other video. And anyways, Einstein's theory was also wrong because of the cosmological damn constant. Uh, but well, Hubble aimed to fix these theories and now well we both know uh, we all know that Sir Isaac Newton was wrong and well Einstein he also was kind of wrong so yeah I uh, I mean I'm not so smart that my name is literally a synonym for smartness but well if I were him I would probably not follow the norm and instead follow what your theory actually told you but anyways um, these two, that was their biggest blunder. Now, despite how uh, much they screwed up their own theories, I am going to salute both of them. To, to, to not only to honor the discoveries and leaps they made in physics, but also to tell Leibniz and Hilbert out there they're still throwing rocks in my damn window net. To freaking frick off! All right, thank you everybody for watching and we will see you next time. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.